Tangle Hierarchy has at its core these five envelopes with notes written by Mahatma Gandhi on 2nd of June 1947, which happened to be his weekly Monday of silence, but also the day before the announcement of the partition of the Indian subcontinent. Mountbatten would have been meeting Gandhi to perhaps seek his participation or approval. We don't know what Mountbatten said to Gandhi, but in his silence, he leaves us these five notes that we view on that very date as the exhibition opens on 2nd of June, uh, but 75 years later. So while the envelopes sit in the middle of the space, on the two sides are these boxes. One, the mirror box by the neuroscientist V. Ramachandran, a box that reflects the existing arm of an amputee, in a way reflecting the non-existent and thus allowing the amputee to release the phantom pain in a non-existent arm. Something that gets visualized in the work of Alexa Wright, a deeper reflection on this phenomenon of a lingering pain in an absent limb is experienced through the work of Kaderatya, where philosophers, neuroscientists, cosmetic surgeons and amputees uh, take us through the idea of this lingering pain. Seen alongside these images of amputation and pain is the image of a raised arm, a show of hands at the All India National Congress, a meeting held to ratify partition within weeks of Gandhi having written those notes. This is an archival photograph by Homai Vyarawala, who is often credited as being India's first female photojournalist. The raising of hands seemed to have a peculiar dimension of meaning when seen alongside the mirror box, but also seen alongside the amputation of land in the kind of cartographic work of Zarina Hashmi, whose personal biography and family history overlaps with that of partition. And in a way, cartography becomes a kind of central motive in the work of Mona Hatoum, where a cut-up map becomes a bag, uh, sitting alongside trunks and boxes that travelled the very map that Zarina documents since the writing of these notes, um, alongside the stories of the refugees who carried them across the borders. Placed next to the trunks from the Partition Museum is a historic photograph named Games at a Refugee Camp, photographed by Henry Cartier-Bresson at one of the largest partition camps of Kurukshetra, which essentially has a, perhaps a light moment of refugees caught in an act of play, but equally in an act of falling. An image that finds another dimension of meaning in the work of Paul Pfeiffer, where essentially you see images of football players constantly in a state of ceaseless falling. It's a state of fall that is produced by a foul that is now rendered invisible by digitally erasing the person who actually conducts the assault on the falling footballer, who seems to fall on a white line on a green field, perhaps a borderline on a field. And what is a field but a kind of place in which the world is played out. And a kind of diagonal sightline to Paul Pfeiffer's video is a video of a chase in a natural world by Kim Byom, the Korean artist, where it almost appears as if the antelope has run so fast, perhaps on a Mobius strip, on a causal loop, that it now finds itself chasing the predator. Um, and there's a peculiar shift in the predator-prey relationship where the antelope seems to be constantly chasing the leopard. The image of a causal loop, which is almost like an under, undercurrent running through the exhibition, is experienced in a few places through the sort of legendary drawings of Sir Roger Penrose, the great physicist, mathematician, whose early workings of the impossible staircase, that the higher you climb, the more you find yourself where you began, recurs in a couple of places around the exhibition. And in the stairs leading up to the exhibition, you see it alongside audience-triggered tone, a sound of the shepherd tone by the cognitive scientist Roger Shepard, which essentially is a playing of the same set of notes, but our brain cognizes it progressively as an ascending tone. As you lead up towards the end of the exhibition, you realize that it's almost held in a form of parentheses in the work of 
Mikola Ridney, the Ukrainian artist, and Mona Hatoum, the British Palestinian artist, which is essentially the last image that you see of a world suspended, large continents of the world rendered in glass, gossamer, transparent, but yet reflecting the world in all its you know, fragility, holding up a threat to a world that could collapse any time. A fragility that you also see in the very first work in the exhibition, which is Mikola Ridney's capturing of an everyday image of fisher folk fishing on a waterfront. And yet, the fragility of that day seems to be interrupted by advancing drones and airplanes. The video was made six years before the previous invasion of Ukraine, but we see it played out again and again as we reflect on the Gandhi letters, written 75 years before the date on which we read them, we seem to be caught in a tangled hierarchy, a sort of a certain kind of a causal loop, where we see a scale of human displacement in Ukraine, which is almost every day matching up to the scale of human displacement 75 years ago, in the very weeks that form the weeks of the exhibition.